Um, the Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak button sale, and I call on Aileen Campbell. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Next year marks the 10th anniversary of the Road to Recovery. It signalled a landmark change in the way Scotland deals with problem drug use, setting out a new vision in which all drug treatment and support services are based on the principle and hope of recovery. During those 10 years, much has been achieved. We have an impressive and growing recovery network in Scotland. This has proven invaluable in promoting a civic and cultural shift in attitudes towards problem drug use. Within treatment services, we've also seen a shift in attitudes through the introduction of recovery-oriented systems of care. We have implemented innovative harm reduction measures, such as the world's first take-home naloxone programme. We have also established ambitious waiting time targets for access to alcohol and drug treatment. This all comes against the backdrop of almost a decade of record investment. Since 2008, we have invested £689 million to tackle problem alcohol and drug use. The main principles behind the road to recovery that had cross-party support still remain relevant. However, 10 years on, we must be alert to the cha changing nature of Scotland's drug problem and how we respond to new and emerging challenges. Our understanding of the underlying causes of addiction and substance use have developed, aided by an ever-growing evidence and research base. There's a greater understanding of the effects of deprivation, poverty and adverse childhood experiences in driving the reason so many in our communities turn to drugs and or alcohol as a way of escaping the pain painful trauma and experiences. That's why, presiding officer, my intention is to bring forward a combined alcohol and drug treatment strategy in spring next year. Whilst there are clear differences between the two, the root causes and the fundamental culture of the responses by services have too much in common to be kept apart. The legal status of alcohol means there is much that is different in policy terms around availability and accessibility. Indeed, the UK Supreme Court judgment on minimum unit pricing for alcohol is an example of the different levers we have at our disposal in terms of preventative interventions. The Supreme Court judgment marks a landmark movement in our ambition to turn around Scotland's troubled relationship with alcohol. I therefore still plan to bring forward a refreshed alcohol strategy that sets out my plans for preventative action in early 2018. Turning to treatment and recovery support, the focus of our efforts must be on improving the experience for patients and their families. With rising drug and alcohol deaths, evidence of the devastating consequences of problematic substance misuse can clearly be seen across Scotland. These substances are significant contributors to the early deaths or excess mortality that we see in Scotland. We know from the work of NHS Health Scotland, the Scottish Drugs Forum and Glasgow Centre for Population Health, that that generation was made in part more vulnerable by the economic and social decision-making of the 70s and 80s. Those impacted are now reaching an age where multiple social and health issues are meeting years of problem substance misuse with devastating consequences. However, I fully recognise the importance of resources for treatment and that is why the £20 million per annum announced as part of our new programme for government is crucial for this refresh. Presiding officer, that represents 60 million additional funding over the life of this parliament to help deliver improved services, delivered with the person at its heart, not the addiction, and to enable a greater consistency of quality services across Scotland. It will also support alcohol and drug partnerships and services across Scotland as we instill the principles of the seek, keep and treat work, which I will mention more on shortly. Our refreshed strategy and the resources behind it must be innovative in approach, guided by evidence of what works, but also informed by those with experience. Whether that's practitioner or patient, to stand any chance of delivering the impacts we seek, it must be authentic and be empowering of the people seeking to make improvement. The growing demands placed on health services by ageing drug and alcohol users, in particular demands services realign to appropriately and collaboratively link into other areas, including mental health and primary care. This will remove some of the current stresses placed on the system by emergency and unplanned hospital admissions. We must continue our approach of recovery-oriented systems of care. Recovery must prevail as the mainstay of our policy, with care centred around the person connecting into work on homelessness, employability, mental health and family support. This refreshed approach must be viewed as providing an opportunity to enable support to reach out to those who are most vulnerable, but who cannot access the sustained help they need for both health and wider social issues. This is vital because we know being in treatment offers protection against a drug-related death. 
There is a strong sense this is also true for alcohol, but I want to ensure the evidence base is robust. And that's why I've asked Scottish Health Action on Alcohol Problems to lead work to enhance our understanding between the circumstances and contributory factors of alcohol-related deaths. This work will develop actions to further develop the evidence base on alcohol pr death prevention and treatment services. <clears throat> Presiding officer, we know that the cohort most at risk and vulnerable to this are often furthest away from services. And that is why the Refresh will develop our seek, keep and treat philosophy to services. We must actively seek out this hard to engage cohort, whether it be through assertive outreach, advocacy or new innovative approaches. We know retention amongst this cohort can be improved. Much has already been done to ensure service quality, but there is clearly a need to consider whether the range of services on offer can keep more people in treatment by responding to their care needs in a way that addresses all aspects of their well-being. And finally, we also know that it is imperative to appropriately treat people by providing that person-centred care and support alongside social and clinical interventions. Increasing evidence points to factors such as social isolation and stigma as major barriers to continued engagement. Seek, Keep and Treat will be the guiding principle for additional investment to secure change. And I expect to see services being redesigned to be more active in identifying those who are disengaged from treatment. People should only be discharged for the right reasons and appropriately supported as they move on their treatment journey. And we will seek to measure levels of retention and treatment outcomes that are consistent with this approach. We must consider ways in which services can provide the wide-ranging support that will in, uh, keep people engaged. And this must include an acceptance that some individuals will not be ready to immediately embark upon a journey of recovery or abstinence. An acceptance that some will stumble and relapse numerous times in some cases. An agreement that this must not preclude them from receiving high-quality support and treatment when they return. Earlier today, I met with alcohol and drug partnerships and health and social care partnerships to begin to give shape to the shift that is cognizant that these services currently face high demand and pressure. And that is why the resources I outlined earlier are important to enable a move to invest in models that work. Transformation will take time, commitment and energy. It will also require our health and social care systems to assess its current practice, reflect on its effectiveness, be innovative and be open to change if evidence points to a need to improve. The recent efforts to introduce a safer consumption facility in Glasgow is, a, is an example of how ambitious and innovative responses are being generated at the front line. Where we see stigma challenged and a huge public health problem responded to in a way that meets the needs of that population. The law does not currently allow that facility to proceed, but we must not let that be the final word on the matter. And I've written to my UK counterpart to ask for discussions on how this uh, parliament obtains the powers to allow us to meet a significant public health challenge. Treatment can no longer just be clinical, but must also address some of the deep-rooted social and economic circumstances that people face. It's therefore fundamental that we better join the dots between uh, health and social care partnerships and ADPs and ensure provision of addiction services according to robust local needs assessment is a priority set out in the respective delivery plans. This will require cross-portfolio, cross-cutting and cross-discipline working. It will require my ministerial colleagues and I across housing, mental health, justice and employability to align our work and to collaborate. I also aim to engage thoroughly with those who have lived and living experience of addiction, families and those at the front line who dedicate their lives to doing what they can to support and help those with addictions. This strategy must be based on strong evidence and research, but must also be authentic and relevant to all those who interact with it. It must be focused and must drive the improvements we so desperately want to see, but we should not lose sight of the improvements that have been made and I need to continue with the good work that has been impactful. Presiding officer, there are no quick solutions here. Lives are complex, can be chaotic, and can have suffered great trauma. The issues we see in an aging and vulnerable population are long-standing and deep-rooted. Developing a refreshed approach to responding uh, to that ch will be a challenge, but it's a challenge that we will not shy away from. The individuals, the families, and the communities that can be devastated by addiction should expect no less. And just as parties united 10 years ago to back an approach to substance misuse, so too do I intend to work with colleagues across the parliamentary divide and bring back to this chamber a refreshed strategy in spring of next year. So thank you, presiding officer. Thank you very much. The Minister will now take questions. We start with Miles Briggs. Thank you, presiding officer. And I'd like to start by thanking the Minister for advance sight of her statement today. 
It's important, though, I think, that the Scottish gov Government do not try to rewrite history today around drug and alcohol policy in Scotland. So let's start with the Government's 50 million cut to Scotland's alcohol and drug partnerships. That's had a hugely destabilising effect, and I would have expected an apology from the Government today on that issue. But we on these benches see how this issue needs to be addressed, and we have long called for cross-party approach on this. So what assurances can the Minister give that the new strategy will indeed provide some tr truly radical thinking designed to tackle the cultural and society societal issues? And will the Minister today agree to establish a cross-party MSP working group on this issue ahead of the strategy being published? Minister. Um, uh, thanks, uh, Miles Briggs, for his, um, his questions. Um, the new strategy, we aim to make sure that we explore all options that are available to us to ensure that we can deliver a strategy that is cognizant of the new landscape that we face in, that has uh, an enhanced understanding of the current challenges that we face across the country. It's not going to uh, put to one side, though, the impact that Road to Recovery has had. I outlined in my statement the fact that the Road to Recovery has had an enormously positive impact in many aspects of life with, for those who have uh, addiction uh, challenges. Um, but certainly we won't rule out any other innovative ideas. One of them that I did set out has been taken forward by um, Glasgow uh, Health and Social Care Partnership. And I intimated in my uh, statement that I intend to write to the, the UK government. So again, you know, if that is something that uh, Miles Briggs is indicating that he would like to support so that we can get the powers here in Scotland to have bold and ambitious and exciting ways of using in treating uh, substance misuse through a public health lens, then I would certainly welcome that support. I should recognise, though, however, that since 2008, we have put record funding into alcohol and drug partnerships, and we are committed to ensuring that we work with them uh, on this refreshed approach. That doesn't ignore the fact that there are, of course, across all of public life, financial challenges, but that's why the 20 million, to ensure that we enable innovative models of work to deliver improvements for people who are most vulnerable in our society, is why we should uh, welcome this opportunity to refresh our approach and I look forward to working with MSPs across the chamber and give consideration to an MSP working group. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Can I also thank the Minister for advance sight of her statement. Scotland has a, a long history of drug and alcohol misuse which damages far too many lives, families and communities and costs billions of pounds every year. Drug deaths in Scotland are now the highest in Europe per head of population and last year alcohol-related deaths rose by 10%. Officer, so when the government do publish their combined strategy next year, it will require radical action, but it will also require fully to be resourced, in particular when it comes to support for those battling addiction. So can the minister therefore say what assessment has been made of the impact of a 24% cut in support for addiction services uh, and also cuts in local government funding for those services? Minister. Again, I, I thank uh, Colin Smith for his uh, interest and continued interest in this subject. I will, however, remind him that we have, since 2008, put uh, record levels of inf investment into tackling problem alcohol and drug use. Uh, that was £689 cent million since 2008. And it's also important to remember that the total financial resources available in any given year is significantly higher than the contribution that is provided by the Scottish Government and includes direct contributions from the NHS and other statutory partners. But we recognise the challenges that exist in public life, financial, uh, uh, those financial uh, um, challenges that, is, that exist, which is why, again, I reiterate that the £20 million is important. It will enable us to develop new ways of uh, approaching some particularly uh, difficult and challenging cohorts of drug users in Scotland, those that do unfortunately present uh, in the drug uh, death uh, statistics that we uh, see every year. And we recognise, and that is why I have committed to refreshing our approach, because we need to do something that enables us to tackle that problem and that challenge head on. There are particular reasons. I think, you know, NHS Scotland uh, had taken for NHS Health Scotland had taken forward some analysis of why that was happening in Scotland. And they did point to economic and social policies of the 70s and the 80s that exa has exacerbated that feeling of isolation, neglect, uh, in those drug deaths uh, now in the here and now. So I think there should be real lessons around the austerity policies that have been taken forward by the current UK government to ensure that they're not storing up 
problems 30 years hence from now around the uh, ways in which they are uh, shamelessly uh, pursuing austerity measures. So there are lots of ways in which we can improve services and that's why the resource is impo important and that's why the engagement with frontline practitioners is also important to ensure that we have a strategy uh, uh, that is authentic and relevant and effectively tackles the challenges that we have in Scotland. Stuart McMillan to be followed by Brian Whittle. I keep saying also, first of all, I refer members to my register of interest as a member of the management board of Moving On Inverclyde. Uh, I welcome the announcement and the new strategy uh, and new funding. And can the minister outline if the new strategy can examine and seek to address how different statutory and non-statutory organisations work together so that treatments are truly person-centred and reviewed regularly to ensure that they remain appropriate? Yes. Uh, Thank uh, Stuart McMillan. Um, today, as I said in my uh, statement, I met with uh, ADPs and uh, IJBs where there was discussion around the challenges and issues being faced at a local level and how that impacts on local planning and delivery arrangements. This discussion will continue to develop over the coming weeks and months and will help inform the strategy. So the strategy again offers us an opportunity to join those dots more effectively, not just for the immediate and frontline treatment of drug addiction, but also allows us to uh, have an impact into that wider uh, service delivery uh, arena, helping us to link into homelessness, employability uh, and mental health uh, provision uh, as well. In terms of uh, reviewing and uh, monitoring, there is uh, currently under uh, development by ISD, the, the DAISY approach to um, reviewing uh, treatment and NHS Scotland are, are developing a monitoring and evaluation framework. Both of those things together will allow us to get a bigger and better picture about the a way in which addiction manifests itself across the country. That evidence will allow us then uh, to take forward the best approaches to help effectively tackle addiction in, in uh, Scotland. Brian Whittle to be followed by Neil Findlay. <laughs> uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Now we know, according to the SNP government, policies some 40 or 50 years ago in Westminster have specifically raised Scotland to the highest level of drug-related deaths in Europe and could have nothing to do with anything the SNP have done over the last 10 years even though drug-related deaths have doubled in the last since 2006, 80% of whom are under 50. Can I ask the Minister, given the statement focuses on treatment, what it plans to invest to help prevent the issues of substance abuse and poor relationships with alcohol going forward? Minister. I think Brian Whittle does the research and analysis by NHS Health Scotland a real disservice. Unfortunately, it's not made with any great deal of uh, happiness that the policies pursued in the 80s have resulted and can be in part res resultant in some of the drug deaths that we see uh, today. That is the reality. And I think we should all do well to listen and reflect upon the fact that those economic policies have had an impact on public policy and social policy in the here and now. And that should be a real lesson for the Conservatives whose party down at Westminster continually and harshly continue to pursue austerity measures at Westminster. I don't make that point with any great deal of satisfaction, as I've said. I think the Tories would do well to listen to the calls, not just by the SNP, but around the whole, uh, every political party in this chamber to halt the rollout of universal credit, to stop with austerity policies, because all they do, if we look at examples from the past, is store up problems uh, in the future. So we will continue to do what we can to pick up the pieces, to do what we can to support this vulnerable people, these vulnerable people who deserve to be seen through, uh, uh, who deserve to have services delivered through a public health lens to enable them to go on and uh, contribute uh, in uh, society and to be feel that they have got the support from services that are delivered in a holistic way. So uh, Brian Whittle does a disservice to the research and analysis that have been undertaken by others who have led their expertise, lent their expertise to us, enabling us to develop a strategy that will help uh, many people in Scotland. Neil Finlay, followed by Claire Hawkey. I couldn't give a toss about the party politics of this. this I couldn't give a toss about the party politics of this. This is one of the greatest issues facing communities across Scotland, but most notably the poorest communities like those that we all represent. And people are dying years before their time. The streets are awash with illegal drugs and organised criminals are growing fat in the profits of misery. So is it not time that we had a radical change of direction. Otherwise, we'll be back here in another 10 years with so many more sons and daughters having become a grim statistic of what is our collective, our collective failure. 
Minister. Again, that is why we've come to this chamber today to engage what I've said in my uh, statement. Uh, and I certainly don't think that I'm somebody who uh, shies away from engaging with other people, regardless of the party politics at all. And certainly the whole reason for me wanting to take forward this refresh was exactly because of the dr drug death statistics that come out that are not just statistics, they represent individual people who have lost their lives, individual families who have suffered bereavement, loss of potential, a huge huge devastating blow to the communities and families that those people have come from. So that's exactly why my focus is on making sure that we can get things right. That's exactly why we've got 20 million extra going into the services. And that's exactly why I'll continue to focus my work and work and engage with people who are constructive in their approach to wor towards creating a, 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 a strategy that we can ensure delivers for people who are in greatest need of help. Claire Hockey to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I refer members to my register of interest in that I'm a registered mental health nurse and I hold an honorary contract with Creative Glasgow and Clyde NHS. As the Minister set out in her statement, the proposal for a safer consumption facility fell recently, an ambitious, innovative proposal by Greater Glasgow and Clyde NHS, and I note she's written to the UK Government seeking a change in the law to allow such a facility to proceed. If the UK Government refused to act, Will she request that the necessary powers are devolved to Scotland so this Parliament can make the decision? Minister. I, abs absolutely. We support Glasgow Health and Social Care Partnerships proposals, particularly in light of the growing number of HIV cases in the city. However, uh, as I mentioned in my statement and as uh, uh, Claire Hockey outlined, the law in Scotland doesn't allow us uh, to proceed, though we are grateful to the Lord Advocate for providing his advice. Um, drug legislation is currently reserved uh, and we're waiting to hear back from the UK government before making any decisions. And certainly if they aren't able to enable this uh, to go forward, we'll certainly always be making the case that drug policy should be and should rest with this parliament. John Finney to be followed by John Mason. Uh, thank you, President Officer, um, and thank the Minister for early sight of the statement and indeed in response to that. Uh, reply to the previous question. Minister, you, you rightly identify the unacceptable level of drug-related deaths. At the moment, we have a, an outbreak of HIV in uh, Glasgow, 105 new cases since uh, identified at uh, October last month. Uh, a large proportion of these with, uh, uh, have hepatitis C co-infection, a problem across Scotland. We've had the enforced closure of the busiest sterile injection equipment supply facility in Scotland, and that's led to a significant decrease in the number of clients accessing such equipment. You touched on the issue of the Lord Advocate. This is clearly a health rather than a justice uh, um, issue. Um, I wonder if you would accept that rather than a refresh of something which is clearly failing, that it's a radical overhaul, including looking at decriminalisation, that's required. Minister. Well, I appreciate the way in which John Finney has uh, articulated the points. The issue around the HIV outbreak uh, is a matter that it gives me great concern. The, uh, the Glasgow Needle Exchange Service closure is, a, is an issue that is ongoing. Myself and Hamza Yousaf uh, are in continuing our engagement with Network Rail and Glasgow Health and Social Care Partnership to uh, ensure that we can try and uh, achieve a satisfactory, satisfactory solution to that particular issue. Um, John Finney, though, would do well to engage with some of the ADPs. The ones that I spoke to today were at great pains to say that they didn't believe the road to recovery is something that they think has failed. I outlined where there has been huge improvements across uh, Scotland. ADPs were keen to make sure that we don't just disregard that uh, good bit of work, but actually refresh how we approach uh, drug, uh, drug taking in the country and not just disregard the achievements of road to recovery. So there is opportunity, I think, for us to be bold, to be ambitious, but that has to be cognizant of the fact that there has been improvements made through road to recovery and we'll continue to work through uh, with frontline practitioners, those with lived and living experiences around what more we can do to improve uh, the services across the country to enable that, to ensure that we have people who are at the heart of service design and delivery. John Mason to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Uh, thank you. Uh, the Minister and I attended a very moving uh, service on Thursday evening organised by Family Addiction Support Services, uh, which was really a remembrance service for those who had died through alcohol and drugs. Uh, she mentions a £60 million fund. Will some of that be available to support families uh, as well as uh, mental health and homelessness and so on? Minister. 
And I again would uh, like John uh, Mason to uh, pay tribute to FAST and the, way, um, the work that they do to support families across uh, the city of Glasgow and beyond uh, those families who are coping with the impact of addiction and the tribute that they gave to those that had lost their lives at that uh, service on uh, last week. Um, John rightly also outlines the fact that there is a need to ensure that we engage with families and that's absolutely part of the uh, intention uh, on this strategy to make sure that we don't just uh, listen to clinic clinicians or practitioners but actually engage meaningfully with those with lived and living experience of addiction and also the family who are often the ones that have to uh, pick up the consequences of that addiction or the ones that are left devastated uh, by the impact on a loved one. So we do and we have and we continue to engage with uh, organisations like FAST, like um, Scottish families affected by uh, drugs and others who will be able to input into the development of this strategy. Alice Crowell Hamilton to be followed by Richard Lyle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Doesn't the Minister accept that we can't begin to build an effective strategy uh, while her government won't accept the failures of its administration, which defunded drug and alcohol services by a similar amount to that which they are presenting today as new money, on whose watch we saw a 23% increase in drug deaths last year alone, making us the worst in Europe, and which continues to send people to prison instead of treatment for drugs possession? After 10 years, is this really the starting point she would have chosen for her government's new strategy? Minister. Again, I would reiterate that since 2008, we've invested uh, significantly to, in, to, in tackling a uh, problem alcohol and drug use since 2008, 689 million. And Alec Hamilton would do well also to recognise that the way he articulates that problem isn't as straightforward as he outlines. The trend of rising drug-related deaths has been in evidence since 1996. So there is, it's difficult to see how there is a direct correlation between funding levels and drug death trends. Also, he should do well to recognise that the total financial resources available in any year is significantly higher, as I outlined in a previous uh, response. And any country there will, with additional contributions from uh, health and other statutory partners, as well as the direct contribution that government puts in. So again, we will look forward to engaging with parties across this chamber to develop our new strategy and also recognise the opportunity that we have with this additional resource to make sure that we can refresh our approach, be bold, be ambitious, uh, but also make sure that what we do delivers the impact we need for this vulnerable group of people in Scotland. Richard Lyle to be followed by Donald Cameron. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Minister outline how people with lived experience of substance abuse will be able to inform these new strategies? Minister. Um, again, the, the uh, member makes a, a good case for ensuring that we do actively engage with those who have lived and living experiences. That certainly is uh, something that has been uh, the hallmark of uh, our PADS group that have been looking to tackle the issues around stigma. We um, held a, a, recovery, a, a recovery community gathering in uh, Glasgow in July of this year. Uh, that was the first time that we brought together recovery communities from across the country so that they had a direct input into the work and influence the work that we're taking forward uh, as a government. That engagement will continue uh, and we'll continue to seek out ways in which we can reflect the voices of people with experience and lived and living experience in the new strategy that we take forward. Donald Cameron, to be followed by Alec Neil. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Given the continuing public debate surrounding the efficacy of Scotland's methadone programme, can the Minister confirm if the new strategy will review the use of methadone in treating addiction? Minister. I think it's important to recognise that we shouldn't characterise that as something that's wholly uh, negative because actually the opiate re re replacement therapy has been one of the approaches that has allowed that harm reduction to take place, has allowed people to uh, have functioning lives and has enabled families to recognise the impact that that positive impact that that has uh, had on people uh, uh, who are requiring support. I've spoken again, you know, people across the chamber are looking for me to ensure that I have direct uh, engagement with people who have lived and living experiences. So while the heckling happens across from the Conservatives, I'll continue to work and engage with people who are telling me about the impact that that has had, the positive impact that's had in their life to reduce harm in communities across the country, uh, to reduce some of that criminality that others have talked about, and to enable us to allow them, when it's appropriate for them, to embark upon a journey of recovery. Alec Neil. 
Presiding officer, can I welcome the statement and welcome the Minister's commitment to cross-party working, because I think this is an issue in which we must have cross-party working. But can I also say, I, th don't think she, I think she's absolutely right, we cannot disregard where certain programmes have been successful, and clearly there have been very good examples of success up and down the country. There is also a need for new thinking. And let me give me four, suggest four areas to the Minister, and there are many others. I'm sorry, Mr. I'm sorry Mr. Neil. Four areas sounds like a rather long question. Oh, right. I'm just going to mention the headline, not, nothing more than the headline. Uh, very briefly, officer. Mr. Neil. Uh, first of all, in terms of children, particularly children living in poorer communities, what more can we do to ensure greater prevention of children becoming involved in drugs? Secondly, we need to evaluate the impact of the methadone program and whether there are other alternatives which have been tried in other countries that should be looked at. Thirdly, we need to do more in relation to prisoners. And finally, we do need to do much more in the poorer communities because clearly we all agree that of, of the link between poverty and drug and alcohol abuse. And clearly we need to try to tackle the problem at source, i.e. reduce the levels of poverty and deprivation. I think we all need to do some new thinking in all of these and other areas. Minister. I, um, I, again, I thank uh, Alec Neil uh, for making the points. Certainly the, the four headlines that he uh, outlined will be something that we'll continue to engage with him on. Uh, the fact that he mentioned children, though, I think is important, and there is a focus, and there has been a continued focus on ensuring that we support this very vulnerable group of young people who uh, we don't want to predetermine to a life of substance misuse either. We need to take a life course uh, approach to this. And while I have uh, set out what I think has been some of that innovative thinking that I don't think anyone has asked about, that seek, keep and treat approach, which is to look and seek out assertive outreach to try and find people who are harder to reach, who can't engage with services, who find that there are barriers in, involved in terms of them engaging with services, to seek out and help them keep them in services, because that stands the best chance of preventing uh, a drug-related death. That is certainly something that is uh, uh, bold and ambitious. Again, it's disappointing that nobody has recognised uh, that or wants to kind of develop that issue more. Poverty, of course. I said and outlined the NHS Health Scotland's uh, analysis of drug-related death, that poverty has a, 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 a huge link to the drug taking and uh, drug misuse in, in Scotland. So absolutely, uh, we'll certainly look at the issue of poverty. And it was interesting that the Conservatives at that point decided to clap at that point that Alec Neil made because they should again have a Who's close look at some of the policies their UK counterparts are taking down in yes. uh, Westminster. Years and years I hear Brian Whittle talking about hear Brian Whittle talking about ten years. How many years will he and his government continue to pursue harsh or harsh austerity measures? How many years will he continue to consign generations uh, of children across the whole of the UK, not just Scotland, the whole of the UK? to poverty and how many problems is he storing up and his party storing up 30 years from now and who will be left to pick up the pieces can i thank the minister and all members for their contributions this afternoon we'll move on now to the next item of business which is a debate on motion 9205 in the name of angela constance on making scotland equally safe